that he is their God. So she says, no, he is not God. He is only a prophet of God like Muhammad. So I said, look, there's no problem then. Between you and me, there is no problem because we also believe that Jesus was a mighty messenger of God. Not just a prophet, but a great prophet. Like Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa But I said, what church do you belong to? So she said, she is a Roman Catholic. So I said, look, if you are a Roman Catholic, then you believe in the Holy Trinity. So she said, yes. See, without knowing that, you can't argue with people. She says, you are attributing to Christians that we say Jesus is God. And he says, Jesus is not God. That means, I said, look, what church? She said, Roman Catholic. I said, if you are a Roman Catholic, I said, that means you believe in the Holy Trinity. She said, yes. So I said, in your catechism, in your book of instructions, it says that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. I said, is that right? She said, yes. I said, your book continues, your catechism. It says the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty. But they are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. Is that what it says? She said, yes. I said, it continues. The Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. But they are not three persons, but one person. Does it say that? She said, yes. So I said, that is what I'm telling you. That look, this is <laughs> the is most nonsensical thing you are saying. Person, person, person. But not three person, but one person. What language is that? That's not English. Can you see? It's very easy just to say bamboozle people. You see, look, we get bamboozled. You know, we get bluffed. The person is speaking English and she's speaking meticulous English, this lady. She's speaking beautiful English, you know, she's got control over the language, but now when I'm asking a simple basic question, person, 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 but you say not three persons, but one person. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? No, it doesn't. So you say, you believe that the Father is there, the Son is there, and the Holy Ghost is there. They believe that at the beginning which had no beginning, you know, at the very beginning, when Allah, before He created anything, the Father was there, the Son was there, and the Holy Ghost was there. I said, how many were there? No, no, your mind. What does your mind say? You say, the Father was there, the Son was there, and the Holy Ghost was there. They are co-equal and co-eternal. See, once you know what they are talking about, they say they are co-equal, means there's no superiority of one over the other. And they are co-eternal. At the beginning, which had no beginning, they were all there. I said, how many were there? Three. Can you see that? Three. So I said, you believe in three gods. She said, no, I believe in one God. <laughs> so the thing is this now, we, we can just talk, you know, I said, now somehow another Christian analogy was given. He says, you see, you have three cups of water, three cups of water, and you put them into one bigger cup, so it's all one water. So they watered down the Trinity. They watered it down. But I said, now look, the Father, the Father, when they say in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is the formula. This is the formula of faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When you say that, when you repeat that, how many pictures you see in your head? See, I asked the question. This Christian was talking to you. He said, look, when you say in the name of the Father, are you thinking of the Son? And when you say and the Son, are you thinking of the Holy Ghost? No, unless the mind is twisted, is diseased. You can say, yeah, you see the same. When you say the Father, you think of the Son. And when you say the Son, you think of the Holy Ghost. When you say the Holy Ghost, you think of the Father. When you say your husband, you think of your Son. And when, what's wrong with you? Look. The thing is now when words, when you use father, father looks different in your mind, son looks different in your mind, the Holy Ghost looks different in your mind. And they can, you can never superimpose these three mental pictures and create one. There will ever be three in your mind. So this is a fallacy and Allah tells us very simple language. He says, Wala takulu salasa. Don't say Trinity. In tahu khair lakum. This is stop it, it'll be better for you. In namallahu la wahid. For your Allah is one Allah, is not three in one, is not one in three. And this Trinity is nowhere in the Bible. Is nowhere in his Bible. Whether Roman Catholic, 
or Protestant, the word Trinity you will never find in any Bible in the world. The word Trinity, this is the foundation of Christianity. That word you'll never find in any Bible in the world. Amazing. So they say, we believe what we want to believe. I say, you have the privilege. That's your privilege. You can deny God if you like. Allah gives you that privilege. There's one thing he will not control is your mind. He gives you freedom. Think as you like. You want to abuse him, swear him, go ahead. He gives you that freedom. But it's the most nonsensical idea. Father, Son and Holy Ghost put together are not three but one. Yes, Chacha. Saint Kapadia. To elaborate the question put by Dr. Anwar, if I mistake not, Shariat of Musa alayhi salam ended when Isa alayhi salam came and Shariat of Isa alayhi salam ended and all Shariats ended when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was declared as a prophet. As per the statement given by you through the Bible, and I, what I have been able to understand, all these Christians from the stated by the Bible are pastors. So I would like to put this question to you, Dr. Amasab, that uh, should an Islamic state like Pakistan permit bastards to create bastards and bastards? Should they be permitted to create bastards and bastards? Should they Missionary should not be closed down altogether because as a Muslim, we are supposed to, I mean, give sermons for doing good things and we are supposed to stop it by hand. Iman, as we say, has got three stages. Stop it by hand, if not by mouth, if not feel in your heart that it is wrong. We as a Muslim state and one of the most Muslim, I mean, biggest one of the Muslim state and that we have got so much of religion in our Islam, India and Pakistan. We, Pakistan being a Muslim state, should put a ban on creating bastards in this country. Yes, my son. Go ahead. My name is Faisal Daher. In your previous lecture, uh, you were answering to someone from the ladies and you said, uh, uh, I don't remember your exact words, but you said something that there are things that even God can't do. And an example to that you said, for example, he cannot create another God and uh, he cannot kick me out of his kingdom. Well, if this is the case, then uh, how will you interpret uh, this uh, verse from the Holy Quran where Allah Mari Ta'ala is telling us that in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. I don't know the translation in English, but in Urdu it means so, you know, if I am talking to a Christian uh, that uh, look, there are certain things that even God can't do and I give your examples, he might ask me the question, are you contradicting your own Holy Quran? Look, your Holy Quran is saying that in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir, but you are saying that your God can't do certain things. So, how would I answer him? You answer him by asking him, can your God create another God? Can your God, his God, the God he believes in, he is the uncreated. He said, yes. The Father is uncreated. He is the Father. They talk about the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. The Father is uncreated. Can he create another uncreated? Alas, that's the answer. My question... My question is about the principle given by Islam concerning the marriage of girls. As in our society, mostly it happens that the parents choose such a such a person for their daughter and pressurize her to marry him because they think he can provide her with all the worldly things. And she, being under pressure, keeps quiet even if she does not want to marry him, either out of obedience or love for her parents. Is this pressure by the parents right, or is this muteness of daughter right? Will you please enlighten me on this? Thank you. No, this is un-Islamic. No man has a right to force another human being, his daughter or his sister, into marriage with somebody else that she is not happy about. No man has a right. 